Welcome back to Hardball and the Politics Fix. Tonight's roundtable with Chris Saliz of the Washington Post and April Ryan of the American Urban Radio. Chris, I want you to help me get through this. Let's take a look at a really tough ad on behalf of Elizabeth Dole, who's running for re-election in a very tough race for her against her Democratic challenger, Kay Hagan. Let's watch this ad. It's a tough one. I'm Elizabeth Dole, and I approve this message. A leader of the Godless Americans PAC recently held a secret fundraiser in Kay Hagan's honor. There is no God to rely on. There was no Jesus. Well, Hagan, under God, out of the Pledge of Allegiance, you're down with that. We're down with that. In God we trust, you're going to whip that off the money? Yeah, we would. Godless Americans and Kay Hagan. She hid from cameras, took Godless money. What did Hagan promise in return? There is no God. Wow, Chris Elizabeth, if you listen to that ad, you get the idea that the Democratic candidate for a senator from the North Carolina just said there is no God. Apparently that was an actress, an actor talking. Tell me what that ad's about. Yeah, I mean, look, first of all, Chris, you know context is everything in politics. Elizabeth Dole is in a lot of electoral trouble, polling private and public, Republican and Democrat, shows her losing to State Senator Kay Hagan, who that ad is about. Though Those are not Kay Hagan's word when she says, I don't believe in God. Uh, but what she did is she did attend a fundraiser. Now, this idea that it was a secret fundraiser that didn't allow cameras, 99.9% .9 of, of, of fundraisers don't allow cameras, so I guess that makes them secret. But she did go to a fundraiser. She has said she didn't know that these two people who did attend were affiliated with this PAC. Dole has used it, sort of the transitive property, to say you attended something with them, therefore you share their beliefs. Hagan has hit back very hard herself with an ad in which she talks to camera, and very powerfully at the end, Chris says, uh, I don't think bearing false witness is against another Christian is the right way to end this race. Very powerful uh, uh, message back here. I think it has a real tendency to backfire on Dole because I think people are going to see this as a, a little too much, a bridge too far for a candidate who's losing. Well, is it, is, is it or is it not totally dishonest to have a, a female voice say in an ad, there is no God, with the clear implication to anybody watching, that's the Democratic candidate, if that candidate never said anything like that? Well, I'll tell you what the Republicans would say is which we don't mean to imply that that was Kay Hagan speaking. We never said it was Kay Hagan speaking. But uh, Chris, I agree, with, I agree with you. I agree with you, Chris. Clearly, the implication was meant to be that it was Hagan saying that. There is no question. Uh, you know, North Carolina, okay. as we know, is famous for these kind of ads. Don't forget Jesse Helms and the White Gloves ad back back in the 1990s when he was running against Harvey Gantt. Uh, it is a, a state uh, that is famous for its hard-hitting ads. Well, I remember the ad where they went after Harvey Gantt, the, uh, the African-American former mayor of Charlotte, uh, for having money, taking money from a gay fundraiser. They make it really, well, they jazz it up. Let me go to April. Your thoughts on that. Is this a classic desperation move by a losing candidate and not necessarily an ineffective one? You said the operative word, desperation, uh, in the last few days. But, you know, this is a very serious ad. I mean, in that part of this country, uh, God is very important. And, you know, there are churches everywhere, all sorts of denominations. And for, for that attack to be made against uh, Hagan, it's, it's very serious. And not only that, though, Chris, there's another point. Uh, no matter who you are, whether you're gay, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you believe in God or not, aren't you supposed to be covered by your, your representative, your, your, your senator, your congressperson? I mean, you know, what if she did go to a fundraiser? Wouldn't she be covering them under her services uh, on the Hill? Well, it's a, uh, it's a, the, the, in this case, it's a state senator. They wouldn't be representing the people in Washington. Let me ask you this about... Well, uh, but yeah, but, uh, but still, but I mean, what, but what I'm saying is, but what I'm saying nonetheless, that person is still allowed to go out and, and, and talk to people, correct? I mean, no matter what race, what religion, okay. what gender, what have you. Let me ask Chris about these last minute things. When you go after a person to make them look like they might be uh, not agnostic, but atheistic, that they may in fact be taken... Apparently, they, the, the entire contribution from this guy was a, a, a maximum contribution from a single individual, $2,300. That's what we're talking about here from this individual who's a, a, an atheist. A proclaiming atheist, uh, is it going to work, Chris? <sighs> you know, Chris, I don't know if it will work. I, I do think I. Oh, do by the way, we got it. We just came in. It just came in. Here's the response: okay. a, a TV ad, paid for, produced by Kay Hagan, that's the Democratic candidate for the Senate in North Carolina, defending herself against the ad we just saw that depicted her as a godless person. Here, here it is. 
K. Haven and Elizabeth Dole's attacks on my Christian faith are offensive. She even faked my voice in her TV ad to make you think I don't believe in God. Well, I believe in God. I taught Sunday school. My faith guides my life, and Senator Dole knows it. Sure, politics is a tough business, but I approve this message because my campaign is about creating jobs and fixing our economy, not bearing false witness against fellow Christians. And, well, we'll be back to talk about that. We'll be back with Chris and Ryan to talk about that powerful retort. Sometimes the retort is stronger than the initial shot. You watch it hard We're back ball. with Chris Celeste and April Ryan. April, I want you to respond to what you saw both tonight. The attack ad by Liddy Dole basically blasting her opponent for getting the aid of a godless supporter, making her sound godless because of a voice that sounded suspiciously like the candidate's female voice, wherein the voice said, uh, there is no God. And then a retort ad that talked about a woman by herself talking about her, her life of teaching at uh, Sunday school and being a Sunday true Christian school, yes. and being offended. Uh, what did you make of those back and forths? It was a very strong retort. Uh, uh, you know, we were just saying uh, the retort could be uh, stronger in some instances than the actual, the, the original ad. And again, it goes back to, uh, you know, she's running up against uh, Libby Dole. And the bottom line, she is going to try to make herself you know, to, to remedy the situation, number one, but also she wants to let everyone know, look, I am a Christian, but at the same time, I believe she wants everyone to know, look, I am covering all of what I have to cover in this state so that I can be the effective leader. And again, Chris, you know, I think, you know, it's not about the Christianity thing. It's bigger than that. It's about being able to talk to all groups. It's, it's talking and, and being with all groups because you are representing those people. Yeah. You know what it tells me? Well, your thoughts first, Chris, and then I want to ask you another question. I was going to, let me give you two quick ones, Chris. I think uh, one, Hagen's response is good because she does not uh, directly respond or repeat the claims of the ad. She makes sort of an oblique reference, but she talks positively about herself rather than sort of showing the ad, which would give it extra play. Number two, she brings it back, as all Democrats have done in this last month, back to the economy and job creation. North Carolina, the economy struggling, the textile yeah. industry struggling. Okay back to sort of we need to focus on what's really important to voters okay follow-up question I know you're not an opinion expert you're an analyst but let me ask you both of you does John McCain deserve a measure of respect for the fact that in these closing days of the campaign when all depends on what we're thinking as we go to vote he has not brought up the Jeremiah Wright story he has not lambasted his opponent as a acolyte of a man who said some pretty terrible things at that uh, church what do you think first April he hasn't used Reverend well, Wright against <laughs> Barack Obama. There are a lot of other stories that he's trying to push out there, though. Uh, Reverend Wright has run his course. Uh, everyone sees it for what it is. But, you know, we still have a couple of days left. He's trying to the best of his ability. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to hold okay. off on people giving kudos on either side right now. Okay, April Thid, your thoughts, Chris, does he deserve credit, John McCain, for not using Reverend Wright, not getting racial about it? Uh, April's right that you don't ever want to draw conclusions until it's over, over with. But I do think that the McCain campaign has made a decision and the RNC has made a decision to focus on the fact that Barack Obama's experience okay. does not recommend him to that's be president. It. I think that's probably, uh, I do think it recommends Thank him you. to answer your question. Thanks. Thanks, Chris Eliza. Thank you, April Ryan. The